evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this, the 16th House meeting of the 160th session of the UCC Philosophical Society. The motion before the House this evening being that this House would reject atheism. So, ladies and gentlemen, what should be done? Should we cast God aside, lock him away in a cupboard with Snoopy and Barney and all the other beloved children's characters? Or should we round up all the atheists, exercise them, and then burn them at the stake? Because, honestly, there's no middle ground. You're either for it or against it. Well, that's really for the House to decide. These are the minutes of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Um, I'm a professor of the study of religions, and um, I, uh, I have a few facts to lay before you. The typical Christian is a 40-year-old African woman. The typical atheist is a 42-year-old Chinese factory worker. So when we say atheist, uh, this may not be the image that you have in mind. And uh, the typical atheist in the world today is not um, Richard Dawkins or others at the top table. Now, the reason I start with these facts and figures and references to China and Africa is because as Professor of the Study of Religions, I take a global view of these matters. There are thousands and thousands of religions there are many, many versions of atheism, and it has a very, very long history, and uh, there's no question in my mind that when we say this house rejects atheism, we mean that atheism should disappear from the earth, or that atheists should be prevented from pursuing uh, their atheistic beliefs uh, here or anywhere else. Of course, in some um, societies, atheism uh, may carry a social disadvantage and um, you may hear atheists saying that uh, they're in some way a persecuted minority. In fact, I was listening to the radio a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, Marion Finucane was interviewing a character called David Norris, whom you probably know, he's a TD and a broadcaster, I believe. And uh, David Norris is, um, has aspirations to become president of, um, of Ireland. And uh, he was discussing his prospects. And uh, as is usual with RTE, people email in. And somebody called Michael from Kilkenny emailed in. I have no idea, just Michael from Kilkenny. And said, do you realise that you can't become president of Ireland um, because you have to take a religious oath? And um, Marion Finucane, bless her, said, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So that is discrimination. You, you can't become president of Ireland unless you take a religious oath. It's not quite up there with sex trafficking and women not being allowed to become priests and you can't be a teacher in an Irish school unless you speak Irish. But yes, it is discrimination. Of course, it's balanced in some ways by the fact that amongst the four million Irish people, you can't become president if you're an atheist, or at least they'd have to change a little rule. But in China, where there's a thousand million people, you can't become president unless you're an atheist. So there is a kind of balance globally in all these matters. And if you hear atheists saying that they're a persecuted minority and you shouldn't reject them uh, because it would be uh, harsh to do so, then um, bear, um, think that uh, we're not talking about personal beliefs. We're talking about the prospect or the possibility of atheists uh, running our lives. And uh, it's only really from that point of view that I want to argue that we should reject atheism. I have absolutely no argument with anybody who holds any form of belief uh, about the world whatsoever. In fact, uh, a necessary skill in the study of religions is the ability to believe at least a hundred things before breakfast. So reject doesn't mean ban. Um, it just means that uh, atheists shouldn't be running the place as atheists. Um, in other words, I don't want my a government uh, that is, um, that is uh, ideologically driven by atheism. The examples that we've had in the world have not been particularly inspiring. One can proudly point to North Korea and the Soviet Union and so on, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it's not a good idea to have governments which are ideologically driven, whether that's uh, from a religious point of view or an atheistic point of view or something in between. And um, as a matter of fact, Recent research has shown that um, right across the Western world, certainly, uh, from America, where 72% of people personally believe in God, to Belgium, where the figure is something like 4%, there is almost total unanimity amongst people. as something running at about 70% of people agree that their government should not be religious. 
should not be governed by any particular ideology. It should be secular. And uh, that doesn't mean atheist. That means secular. And I'll come back to that. And this is true quite regardless of people's individual beliefs. And it would be true of Ireland, and it's true of Italy. And this has happened over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Now, um, what is atheism? I, I mean, originally the, the motion was this house would reject atheism, which I assumed was this house would reject atheism if it knew what atheism meant. Atheism is primarily an expression of certitude. Um, Ninian Smart, who was a quite well-known philosopher of religion, drew a distinction between certitude and certainty. He was a philosopher, and he said certainty means being certain of something of which you can be certain. Certitude is being certain of something of which you cannot be certain, but, assert, but affirming that you are. Um, so it's an expression of certitude, because that which it is certain about cannot be a matter of certainty. It's also institutionalised. Again, we're not talking about individual um, atheist beliefs, uh, which probably exist everywhere, but um, we're talking about institutionalised atheism. atheism. Atheists who are organising groups and who think that other people uh, ought to be atheist, and therefore, my third point, or fourth point, or third and fourth point, it's a universalist uh, belief or philosophy, and atheists think that that uh, atheism is a fact and therefore everybody ought to accept atheism. Um, and finally, it's evangelical. It has uh, an impulse to go out and sort of convert everybody to atheism. And all of these characteristics make it extraordinarily similar to um, a religion. And they believe in the authority of reason and logic, like Jains, Buddhists and natural the theologians. And of course, they don't believe in God, like Buddhists, Jains and Vedantists. So, uh, for all those reasons, I don't want any of these religions, including atheism, in charge, in running my life. I, I, like most people, I want governments to be organised on a democratic basis, and we vote on things, and we organise things on that basis. Um, so, uh, atheism is good to have on tap, but not on top, as they say. I, I just want to bust a few myths about atheism very quickly. Atheism is not agnosticism. Atheists will say an agnostic is just an atheist with a degree. Well, I'm a professor in a university. I think a degree makes a difference. I think someone who thinks about things and arrives at an agnostic point of view is quite different from someone who arrives at an atheistic point of view and says that's where the thinking stops. Atheists are not the sternest critics of religion. Um, atheism is not scientific. The correct attitude for scientists is agnosticism. Research. Research means to look again. It doesn't mean to stop looking. So it's important, I think, uh, to recognise atheism also is not secularism. The attitude that I described of not wanting my government to be ideologically driven is not atheism, that's secularism. And secularism is about uh, keeping religion and other ideological systems out of the democratic process, in, not out of the democratic process, but out of the... Uh, out of dominating the democratic process. As I said, atheist governments have a pretty terrible record of protecting religious freedom once they get into power. A lot of, a lot of what uh, atheists do, which is exactly what religious people do, is to cut off that conversation and to say, we do know. My argument is that we should not reject atheism in the sense of preventing anyone from having atheist beliefs or expressing those beliefs but only in the sense that you can't be certain about things that you can't be certain about. And this house, and when I, you see it's interesting, I'm not used to these kinds of debates, but it says this house rejects atheism. What is this house? This house is effective, I mean, this isn't like an individual uh, faith decision to reject atheism. This house is like a kind of simulacrum of a legislative assembly. This is about public policy. This is about uh, what we think uh, should be a dominant value in our society. And um, so I, I think, you know, this house, this educated, university trained house, recognises that religious groups, including atheists, don't recognise this fact that we don't know. They, they, they know that we don't know, but they won't recognise it. They insist that they do know, and they insist that you ought to agree with them. And on that basis, and that basis only, I think that atheists should not be allowed to run my life for me. So that is my argument. Thank you very much. I, I have one joke. I have one atheist joke here. <laughs> an, atheist, an, atheist walks, an atheist walks into a bar with a parrot on his shoulder. 
And the barman says, where on earth did you get that? And the parrot says, in China, there's millions of them. 